Hello, and welcome to this chapter in our ongoing series of tutorials that will help you get familiar with using Corel's Video Studio Pro X2. In today's short lesson, we're going to take a tour of the Video Studio Editor. The editor is the portion in Video Studio that allows for detailed control and editing. It allows us to work with multiple video, audio, and title tracks, add and edit all kinds of special effects, and get down to the frame and time code level for precise timing and coordination. It's also very helpful in that if you so desire, you can use the DV or Movie Wizard to do some of the heavy lifting, then bring it all into this editor for further work. Now, the editor may seem daunting at first, not unlike many other video editing applications or new interfaces you get exposed to. We oftentimes spend half of our time trying to locate the right tool in the plethora of menus and dialog boxes. But this is one of the areas where Video Studio X2 really shines. It is so context sensitive, you'll really need to actually go hunting for a tool. Anytime you select an item in your project timeline, all the necessary options expose themselves in easy to reach panels right above the timeline. The interface itself is even customizable. Let's get started so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to start with my content already brought into the editor after setting up the major components in the movie wizard. Let's review a couple of options in the application's preferences. I'll go to File Preferences, and items that might be important to us might be the levels of undo. Now, I'm going to leave them at 10, but you notice they can go all the way up to 99. Be cautious, though. More levels of undo require more memory to remember all those steps to back up to. Showing the startup screen allows me to choose which entry point to start with, either the two wizards or the editor. Media Library Animation allows us to preview the transitions and video effects before applying them. Automatically saving your project is always a good idea, right? You will still need to initially save your project first. If we go to the Smart Proxy tab, I have this turned on for the main reason that I'm working using high definition clips. Having Smart Proxy enabled allows Video Studio to work with smaller files that will react quicker, then apply all my changes to the full size clips when I create my final project. And finally, the UI layout allows me to set interfaces in several different preset choices, as you can see here. I will keep it as the default, though. In addition to the preset layouts, I can still resize any of the main areas by grabbing these parts here and moving them around. My main interface is made up of four main areas, the movie window, the gallery, the timeline, and my edit panels. The movie preview window allows me to play either individual clips, or all active tracks at once, as well as set start and endpoints for any of my clips. The gallery area displays libraries of video clips, audio clips, transition effects, video filters, animated titles, and more, all from this handy drop-down list. The timeline down here is probably the most important panel in Video Studio. This view is considered the timeline because of, well, the timing aspect that we can control. But we also have the storyboard view and the audio view, where we can see individual wavelengths and edit those as well. The entire view is zoomable, if that's even a word. I can view the whole timeline by clicking this button right here. And there are some other important buttons along the top here too. For instance, here's where I can enable or disable the Smart Proxy feature. The Track Manager is where I can add additional tracks to my timeline for video overlay, audio, and titling, like so. The next one over is the enabling of Dolby Digital 5.1 Surround Sound. And the last one allows access to the Painting Creator, where I can actually paint on individual frames and images. Now, let's take a quick look at the actual editing tools and how I access them. Once again, the clips I add to the timeline can be accessed from one of the many galleries and also from the tabs across the top of my screen. To import any content, I simply go to the appropriate drop-down and click on the Open folder. But remember when I said at the beginning that I really need not be concerned where my editing tools are, but that they will appear when I select something in the timeline? Let me show you. As I click on an image, the title, a piece of audio, or video, notice the helpful panels editing tools that appear. 
This is what I'm talking about. Now, I won't go to the purpose of all these tools. That will be for later lessons and for you to experiment with. But let me just say that the interface in Video Studio Pro X2, from its wizards, custom interfaces, animated examples, drag and drop content, and context sensitive tools, is designed from the bottom up to be intuitive yet powerful, fun yet effective. Try it yourself. Thank you, and we'll see you again in a future lesson.